Hey everybody, I'm Todd and this is Sweet Tea Get Tires. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel and welcome to my life. Alright you guys, when we left off in the last Unity build video, we had the neck blank to this point. My two sides that matter right now, they're parallel with each other and nice and flat. I'm ready to continue on this build. I've decided to make this guitar a 25 inch scale, so a PRS scale. I have got a paddle headstock, 24 fret, maximum guitar works, 25 inch scale, square heel template right here for a 24 fret PRS scale neck. I've got the fretboard template right here with the notched end so I can use the truss rods that I like that are heel adjust with a spoke wheel. And I've got the 25 inch scale fret slotting template. I figured a 24 fret guitar, this will be my first 24 fret design. And I think this will work out really good if someone wanted to commission a build from me for this design. I can do a 25 inch, a 25 and a half inch, 24 and three quarter, whatever scale length you guys may want. I can do it as a 24 fret, a 22 fret. I could do it as a 21 fret if you wanted. So I'm trying to keep my options open and I'm trying to make this guitar as universally appealing as I can. That's another reason that I'm calling this build the Unity. Um, universal, you know? Anyway. We need to mark out this neck again. And I've already taken you guys through how to find the back angle and all that stuff. I showed that in the last video. We're gonna do those same things, yet we're gonna change the scale length. We've got the end of our neck marked right here already. I have not changed that. Our center line obviously won't change, but we need to remark our nut and we need to remark the end of where we want our headstock to be. Enough of me talking, you guys. Let's get this nut marked out. We'll make a few other marks on this neck. I want to redefine that back angle. Let's get to work on this neck, you guys. Since this is a paddle head 3x3 three three headstock, it should be identical, regardless of which way I place it. To prevent the refraction issue that you get with the light shining through the acrylic, I'm going to use this scribe side down. We'll mark out our nut, get it solidified where we want it. I'm going to double check for straightness with my protractor. All right, now I know that my nut line is perpendicular to the center. So there's my new nut line right there. We're going to get a rough measurement from this headstock and then I'll add like 20 millimeters or so onto it because I want to offset these tuners. So we're at 173 millimeters. So I'll carry this up to at least 190. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to take the protractor again, line this up on our center line, make ourselves another line right here. So now I know where my nut line's at. I know where my headstock potentially is gonna end. Now what we can do is take our little square right here and I will copy that nut line over to the side of the neck. We want this to be as accurate as possible. We're gonna come to this side, do the same thing. There we go. We'll do the same thing back here on this 190 millimeter mark and we'll go through that same method that I talked about in the last video so I will do exactly what we did the other night I'm going to measure up from the bottom 18 millimeters that gives me two millimeters of slop below here so I've got sanding and carving room we want a shelf for our nut to ride on all right, that looks good. Now we'll make another mark down the side of our neck. We've already got our 18 millimeter line drawn here. 
I want to intersect at our back of our nut line and that 18 millimeter line right there. So that's going to establish our angle. Then we'll measure that angle and find out what angle we're at. And we should ultimately be somewhere around that seven to seven and a half degree. So we want to be able to see the top of our neck through the zero lines that run parallel. And then we want that back line of our nut running that way on the zero line. Then we can look at this degree line right here. Seven and a half degrees, that's perfect. We got a seven and a half degree back angle. We got 18 millimeters from that line to the bottom of our neck. We need a headstock thickness of 16 millimeters, which is gonna give us two millimeters of slop. Now that we know where that falls, we can lay out where our truss rod's gonna need to go. So I want my truss rod nut about a sixteenth beyond the end, or we'll say two millimeters beyond the end. That way I can adjust my truss rod in or out. So we're to the point now to where we can mount this thing up in the truss rod routing jig. We'll route from this mark right here all the way off the end of my neck because my truss rod is going to be hanging out the end of the neck. We need to mount up a quarter inch bit in our router. I may have to move the neck a little bit and redefine the center line if the bit does not fall where it needs to. But that's not that big of a deal. All I have to do is bump that with the hammer or the little mallet and I can move it side to side. All in the pursuit of perfection, you guys. I think that's got us right there. So I've got this slot cut so I can wedge this light down in here. That will allow me to see all the way down. All right, I'm going to put my mask on so I'm not breathing all this. I want to do a three millimeter cut first. Let's go with our second pass. I'm going to drop it three millimeters. Let's take this last pass. There we go. One truss rod slot perfectly centered. So even though that jig is a pain in the butt to set up, it does work really well. Now, I'm going to square up this end down here while we're at this point. Oh yeah. I'm centered, everything's nice. This eighth inch center punch will fit perfectly down in these hard and still drilling bushings. And I can mark out for where we want to drill in our alignment pins. There we go. Right, you don't want to use too much super glue on these because if it puddles up on the outside of these posts, that can hold your fretboard off later if you forget to clean that off. And we'll shave these off. You want these dead even with the top because we want to be able to run this around the router table with the template down. All right, so now we're dead even with the top. So we've got this template affixed to our neck using the alignment pins only. These are snug enough in those bushings to hold this template down while we do our routing and all the other functions that 
will be required while this template is affixed to this neck. So what we're going to do right now is mark out this neck shape from the front of our nut line down to the heel. I'm going to use a 0.9 millimeter pencil. That way I've got a little leeway. Now the template will go on there and come off as many times as we need it to in order to get this right. Now what I want to do is visually verify that I'm equal distances on the side of my veneer lines right here. We can measure it if we want, but I can already tell that we're really, really good. And I observed the center line on the template anyway, so I know how accurate those templates are. I've used these before. Now we can figure out where we want this neck to join the body at, because that's going to have an impact where our bridge gets placed. So what we can do is take our Maximum Guitar Works Fit All template, and this is a 24 fret, 25 inch scale version, and the 25 inch scale line is marked on here, even though this is a tunematic style. We only need three inches of neck pocket bottom. And if I join this neck at the body at the 17th fret, that's going to give me about three and an eighth, which I'm absolutely fine with. We'll add that eighth to compensate for this being a longer neck. That'll give us a little bit longer neck pocket bottom. So we will still observe the 17th fret alignment. We'll wait till the bridge gets here before we do any of that work. And then I'll only use this as the neck pocket routing then we will use whatever we have to to route the pickups in because I don't think this pickup is going to give me room if I observe this position for my half moon fretboard shape. I've spent about the past hour or so drawing in this shape and I'm going to go through this with you guys. I wanted to make sure I knew what I was talking about before I started to explain this stuff. So I'll try to let you see those lines. All right, so let's start with the heel. I've left the heel the full thickness. Now I know it's not gonna need to be the full thickness of this board, but I did not wanna take any off of this yet. For now, I wanna maintain two flat ends on this neck. One at the headstock from the nut line back, one at the heel from the heel transition, all the way up to where it sits in the body at. That's going to allow me to cut out this area right here to basic thickness. I'm going to leave myself about two and a half millimeters of extra thickness here. And then we're not going to mess with the headstock area for a while. But I want to get this area right here cut out. We'll take it over to the spindle sander and we'll sand those two profiles in right there. One at the nut line, one at the heel transition. And we're not going to carry them all the way up to the line. We're going to stay about probably 10 millimeters away from that line and I'll hand carve those when it comes time. I love hand carving a volute or a volute and I absolutely love hand carving the heel transition. I want that done after the neck gets bolted to the body. So we're only going to be able to go so far with this thing. Right now, what I'm going to do is take this thing over to the bandsaw and cut from the heel transition to the nut line to within about two and a half millimeters of its final thickness. Once we get that done, we'll take it back over to the bandsaw, saw out the neck shape from the end of the heel up to the nut line. I'm going to leave this just like it is for now. We want to maintain full thickness edges, so here and here, two square sides, these two sides here, and these two sides here. That's going to allow us to run this across the router table in either direction. Let's get over to the bandsaw and saw this part out. This is going to be a slow going process. It'll take a while. So now we still got two flat blocks on this end. We'll still be able to run this around the router table. What I want to do now 
is cut the perimeter part of my neck shape to within a couple of millimeters. But before I do that, I'm gonna take this over to the spindle sander and get this sanded up to the line, get this nice and flat, and get everything sorted. There we go. That's looking really good. My glue joint's looking mighty good. That red heart's beautiful. Everything's ready to roll. We got the start of our transitions done. I'm still a good four millimeters away from where I want to be. We've got this smooth, got all our bands, uh, bandsaw marks off of here. I left my line, as you can see. I'll carve that with the Shinto after we cut the rough shape of the perimeter, the neck out, and I run this across the router table to get this neck down to its final dimensions as far as the perimeter from the nut up to the heel side goes. I'm gonna take this back over to the bandsaw. We're gonna cut our neck dimensions down to within a couple of millimeters of the outside perimeter shape. That was noisy, but successful. So there we go. We're back in the shop. Today is December the 31st. Tomorrow is New Year's Day and my 29th wedding anniversary. I have given so much thought to how I'm gonna handle getting extra width on this headstock. So what I'm thinking about doing is actually tapering my headstock in. And then I will actually glue on not only some of this maple, but I'll separate that by a piece of this red heart right here. I could run that on that taper like that, glue on another piece of maple on the outside, border this with some veneer, and I think that would make a really interesting look. Here's where I ran into the issue. My headstock's gonna be offset. I want my three base strings or the base side of the neck, I want those closer to the nut than the treble side. I want to offset these tuners so I'll never run into an issue with this headstock design with 90 degree tuner tabs running into each other where they meet on the back of the neck. That left me thinking, okay, do I still taper this before I account for the offset, leave it centered, so both my tapers start and end at the same spot, or do I compensate for the offset on that taper, do this side down here like this, and then move this side up like that? Either way, I run the risk of it looking a little funky. But something has to be done. I need more width. I'm not gonna get it without gluing on some extra wood and I don't want it to end up looking like a mistake, so I need to turn it into a feature. I think what I need to do right now is get over to the bandsaw and go ahead and cut my angle for at least the top of this headstock. The more I thought about that, I realized as long as I only cut the top section off of this headstock and leave my back flat, I can still flip this neck over using the bottom bearing on the bit in my router table and I can still run this neck across my router table in either orientation, up or down, which will be important when it comes to routing in the corners. I don't like taking that router across this outside corner right here. You take a chance on ripping a chunk out of the side of the neck. So I like to turn this neck over and run this against the rotation that keeps everything nice and clean, and it keeps you from having that tear out. Cutting the front off of this headstock is the obvious and the logical choice for a next step, I think. At least that's what I've talked myself into. You guys, let me know in the comments how you would do this differently, or offer me some suggestions on how you would do this in the future. When it comes time to cut that taper in, I'm going to leave myself plenty of room outside of that so I can run my hand plane down that taper 
get a nice straight line so I don't have any issues with gaps or anything like that when it comes to glue the headstock up. So what I'm probably going to do is ride that taper right up the outside, about two millimeters away from the outside of my tuner holes. That way I keep the tuners drilled through the maple. I get a red heart stripe up the neck diagonally or up the headstock diagonally. All right, you guys, I'm gonna get over here to the bandsaw and cut this out. We'll come right back. We're gonna continue to work on this neck. So here we go. Got this on eBay for 28 bucks. Killer little hand plane. And I've got a number four right here. So this is a Durablock firm sanding block. And we're going to start to sand this in. I'll take some 80 grit and we'll creep up on that line with the sandpaper. We're nice and flat. Right, I don't think I'll carry it any further than that right now. There we go. I've given this some thought, and what we need to do now is start to design this headstock shape and figure out how we want to cut that taper into this headstock. So I've got my old Sweet Tea Original headstock template right here. I want to use this tuner layout but I want to offset these. We know where the front of our nut falls, so we just want to line this up on that center line and line at the top as well. Right there. Let's draw these tuners out. I've measured the distance to find the center of how far apart these tuners are, and they're 35 millimeters apart. So we're going to go a third, which is 11.6. We'll say 12 millimeters. All I need to do is mark myself a line 12 millimeters from the nut line on my center line right there. And then we'll reposition this template just like so. And then we'll draw in this shape here. What I mainly want to do is figure out this top area. Let's draw in those tuners on that side too so we can be certain. I don't want to make anything permanent until we're absolutely certain that we're happy with it. So I'm not going to punch these in quite yet. I just want to get a look at them. So there we go with that. You know, I think it'll preserve more of the continuity if we keep that offset a theme throughout the whole design of the headstock. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. I don't want it too wide up here. It'll start looking blocky and paddle-like. Knowing that we're gonna at least use that as a starting point, we know we've got the outside line of these tuners now. So what I can do, we can go in here and make ourselves a taper that follows the path of our tuners right outside where our tuners are gonna get drilled and we need that really close following that path we'll do the same thing on this side so there's our angles this is going to be difficult you guys because i'm not sure about it you know i mean i feel like i want to try this and there are very few things that you will do in guitar building that you can't recover from. I think the fact that these meet at different places on the center line will be offset by the fact that we're elongating this and making this part longer. So I think that's probably going to work out fine. I don't want to take a chance on losing that stability that we have in this headstock right now. So I feel like what we need to do 
is to attach the template to this neck blank and run this across the router table from where our cut is all the way around this and get the perimeter shape of our actual neck done. Then we can go and start cutting on this headstock. That will make me feel a little better about how things are gonna go. I really wanna get a video released in the next couple of days and it's Saturday, December the 31st. And as I said earlier, tomorrow's New Year's Day and it's also my 29th wedding anniversary. So I need to make certain that I make myself available for my wife if she needs me for anything. 29 years ago tomorrow, I married the greatest woman on earth. I, I wouldn't change it for the world, you guys. I'd do it all over again from now on. Uh, my wife is awesome. She lets me do this every single day of my life. She doesn't complain about it. She's my biggest supporter. She is the basis for what I think love is, you know? So she's awesome. I love her. Cheers, babe. I love you. Happy anniversary. Let me get the router table set up. We'll come back, get this shape routed out. We'll continue on. All right, you guys, we're back. I am getting ready to run the neck part of this across my router table, get the perimeter shape cut. We're gonna stick the template down to this neck with super glue masking tape as well as the alignment pins because I damaged these pins when I was planing the headstock. All right, you guys, we got our template stuck to the blank at this point. Let's get over the router table and get this done. I am gonna try and do most of this process with my neck blank upside down. I'll use the bottom bearing um, to catch most of this, that's going to keep me from dealing with this dip as I come off the table. Now, down here on this end, I will have to flip this over. The router does not like outside corners. You'll see what I mean when we get over here. I usually don't move the camera, but I want you guys to be able to see what I'm talking about when it comes time to cut this corner in here. So, I'm going to mask up, and we're going to get this done. Let me grab my mask here. That's what I'm talking about. I don't want to hit that corner with the neck in that orientation. I'll change the router over so we can route that separately. All right, let's change over the router. Let's finish this up. There we go. Got a nice perimeter shape. I got a little burn on my heel, but that's fine. We'll sand that and sort that all out. Now we can turn our attention back to the headstock and figure out what we want to do about these wings. I've taken a piece of the wood that I made the neck from, that curly maple. I took it over the bandsaw and I split it in half so I've got a book match. I'm gonna use this in this orientation on that headstock so my two outside pieces of maple will actually be book matched. I'm going to separate that from the maple that's already there by two pieces of this red heart. To make it just a little more interesting, I'm going to take a piece of this fumed eucalyptus veneer I've got right here on both sides between the maple and the red heart. So we'll cut um, as much of this off as we can off the back of our headstock up to where our volute is and we'll leave ourselves just a little piece across the back so our neck can still sit flat on a table. I'm going to get over to the bandsaw. We're going to saw out this material on the back of our headstock right here. Then I'm going to flip this back over and I'll cut these angles. I want to cut the back off first so I can maintain our lines here um, or our lines on the side of the neck. So let's get that done real quick. So there's our angle, pretty much established. I saved our flat. We've got a flat here and a flat here, so my neck will still sit flat on a table. What we're gonna do is cut these two angles in well outside these lines right here. I'll get those cinched up with a hand plane and a sanding block and get a nice glueable surface on our angle there. 
Then I'm going to super glue and masking tape these two pieces of maple down to my table, get these nice and even and flush, you know, with each other. We'll do the same thing to this red heart. We'll save the fretboard work and the neck shaping and all that stuff for video three. Who knows, you guys? I'm not trying to be in a rush on this guitar. We may end up having four videos just for the neck. All right, well, uh, there's nothing I can do now but make this work. So let's get on it. I'm going to switch over to our sanding block. Let's flip it over and do the same thing to this side. So it'll be that on both sides and we'll have a geometrical pattern being created on the headstock, but there will be curves on the side. I really think this is going to turn out really cool. You know, I started thinking about this up front and I was like, do I want this symmetrical? And my immediate answer that came to my mind was no, I don't want it symmetrical. Um, I don't want this to look even. I want it to be offset because my tuners are offset. We're going to do the same thing to this red heart. So as you can see, I've got me kind of a clamping jig set up here. We're going to take a toothpick, just a little super glue. Both those holes are outside of the area that I actually need. I've got just a little space above the surface of my headstock and I've got just a little space below the surface of my headstock. Okay. All right, I want to do the same thing. And now that I've got that up against that block, that kind of wedge fits everything. I like that. All right, I'm just double checking everything to make sure we're above the surface and below the surface on the bottom. There is what will become a non-symmetrical geometrical shape. <laughs> All right, you guys, so you have to kind of look at that for what it will be, not what it is, because you can't tell what that's going to be. That's part of the art of this whole thing. And I'm not claiming to be great at this, you know, I'm not saying that. I wanted to let that vision drive me to do something like this instead of taking the time to sit down and draw it all out on a piece of paper. You know, I'm not that worried about it. Um, I know it's going to work. Now, whether or not it'll look supreme, I have no idea. We're going to find out. But that's part of what turns me on about this so much, is the not knowing, you know? All right, now... I'm going to do the same thing on this piece. There's that side. There that is. All right. And as you can see, I've got a wedge action going on right here. I'm getting good squeeze out all the way down. That's a good thing. I know this looks like a mess right now, you guys. I, I know. But if it turns out anything like what I'm seeing in my head, we're going to end up with a really unique looking headstock. I told you guys in the beginning of this series, at the beginning of the first video actually, that I wanted to deep dive into each individual process as I work my way through this build. And as you guys know, I'm designing this build on the fly. The reason I decided to do that 
is because I really feel like there are so many lessons to be learned through doing a guitar build this way. And I'm hoping that translates into information that you guys can find useful as well. So I thought this would be a really cool idea. I'm having a blast doing this and I'm trying not to let myself think too far ahead. I have not planned anything beyond the finishing of this neck. I've got templates for most of the routes that will be required. What's really going to be interesting and where I'm so eager to get to is shaping the body. I want this to be the first guitar that I plan to duplicate here in the shop on the channel. I can't say I'll ever build another guitar exactly like this one. Um, I'm trying to make this one really special. At the end of this series, I'm going to offer this guitar up for sale. So if one of you guys wants this guitar, we'll talk about that as we get closer to the end of this build. You'll truly be getting a one of a kind. Not only is it the first of this model, it will be unlike any other guitar I ever built. You know, this is the first one. So I want it to be special. I want one of you guys to wind up with a really special guitar. When my hardware gets here from Shaler, We'll be able to decide then if that's what we want to use on this guitar. I've got DaVinci tuners on the way, uh, black chrome 3D6 bridge. Uh, those DaVinci tuners are black chrome with white pearl buttons. I think they'll be beautiful on this thing. But that will have to be decided once I figure out what color we're going to go with on this guitar. Will black chrome hardware look good with that? If it doesn't, I've got other things we can choose from. But I hope you guys will continue to check out this series as I make my way towards completion on this guitar. I've got the Ultimate Strat collaboration about to begin with Geo. I know I've been talking about that for quite some time here on the channel. I lost some time starting at Thanksgiving. I've been sick. My day job's been a mess. I've been super busy. And Geo got a jump on me on that one. So I'm trying to catch up with him. I'm almost done with my neck. As soon as I get done with that, we are going to start releasing videos, so it won't be much longer, I promise you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date as to where I'm at on all the stuff I got coming down the pipe here at the channel. Don't forget to throw me a like, leave me some comments, let me know what you think about this build, let me know what you think about the channel, or just say hello. Happy New Year, you guys. Thank you so much for a wonderful 2022. You guys have changed my life. I hope you have a great 2023. Thank you for everything you've done for me. And as always, you guys, until the next video, peace and love.